What's going on, everybody? I am back after three straight days of sucking down nothing more than cold medicine and trying to get to the other side of this. I feel like I can actually record, or at least I hope that I can, uh, and get something out there. Turns out I'm coming back on a 11? Yeah, 11 game slate. So it's a bit of a monster. This past couple nights haven't even been uh, that great for DFS, so I'm actually not too upset that I've been out, but uh, I'm a little sick of Netflix and coughing and sneezing and all of the other fun stuff. So I apologize in advance. Uh, some of that stuff is probably gonna happen. I'm gonna get to the mute button as quickly as I possibly can. Um, but yeah, I'm not gonna sound the best. I'm not gonna look the best. Which is a struggle, I know, because I normally look incredible. Uh, so let's just let's just dive in right now. Oh, all right, time for the first sip of water of what I assume will be many sips of water in the next hour. Sixers and Pacers. Uh, Sixers 108.5 implied total is 13th. They are six point favorites at home, uh, hosting the Pacers. Take a look at the matchups now. I switched this to rank so it looks a little bit easier, or it's a little bit easier to understand what's going on. Um, Sixers have a good, are in a real good spot at shooting guard. Otherwise, uh, it's a tough matchup. Indiana has been pretty good uh, across the board. Uh, my dotted line has gone away for some strange reason. Love to know why that is. Yeah, it's just not even there. Cool, cool. All right, so nobody really stands out. You know, I think Embiid is perfectly fine here. He's been very non-Embiid-like lately. 39, 29, 30, 33. Um, and he's got the freight that uh, makes it a little nerve-wracking. He's probably not somebody I would seek out. Um, on such a huge slate, I want to feel pretty good about the guys that I'm going going pretty hard on. I wouldn't... <laughs> pretty hard on. Um, and I wouldn't see Embiid in that sort of light tonight. I think he's fine. I just... I wouldn't go crazy. Uh, Simmons, C-plus across the board. I feel like this is a half-decent spot for him. There's no boost or anything for him, but, like, I don't know. Yeah, maybe I'm just wrong. I feel like he's safe tonight. I don't know why. It just, I don't have, like, stats to back that up. Just one of those weird feelings. Uh, Covington at 6,000 and 5,900, I'm not really interested in. I know he's coming off of, uh, you know, two 40-point games in, the past, in his past three, but... just don't know he has been not the best this year where is he hiding where's his uh yearly points per minute yeah you know what it's not horrible i just i don't see the i don't see it i know that he's been hot lately let's take a look at his chart Yeah, been been really picking up his play, um, but you know, for most of this year, there's a very clear spot where he was, and uh, he's been playing a, a little bit above his head right now. Um, I wouldn't want to pay that premium in a matchup that I think is kind of difficult. I do want to give a little boost to Redick, uh, just because of the good shooting guard matchup. It shouldn't move the needle too much, but just enough that he might pop up in some lineups. Uh, but I don't think that the Sixers are a spot where you should be looking for people. The only upside to this game is that both teams care about it and that you should be able to project it um, normally. You know, we don't have to worry about anything too weird. Uh, but, yeah, I wouldn't really commit to much of anything on the Sixers' side. Check out Indiana. 
Indiana, six-point underdogs, 20th implied total at 102.5. Again, Sixers are really good on D. Uh, Only decent matchup would be at shooting guard, and even that is still just average. Um, You know, I think Oladipo's number is probably a bit too high. You'd be looking for 48 or so, which is... It's a lot for uh, a game in Philly. I don't think that it's a good spot for Bojan. Um, You can talk me into Darren Collison if you think that he's going to get a couple extra minutes. 5000 and 4900 I think there's some upside in his price. But other than that, this, this isn't really the game for me. I'm generally big on Miles Turner, but... I don't see anything that stands out as a reason I should go crazy. I realize that he's put up 38, 38, and 43 in his last three, which would all be, uh, you know, 5X or higher, but I'm going to avoid most of this game tonight. Uh, We'll go Wizards and T-Wolves. Wizards 110 implied total is ninth. God, I sound so nasally. Uh, They are four-point favorites at home. Um... Yeah, I don't think this is going to be another one where I'm super interested in the wizard side of it. Uh, Not the best matchup. You know, Minnesota's been really solid in uh, preventing big games. Beal at 8,400 on FanDuel. Played 27 minutes his last time out, but he's coming in on a couple days rest. Um... You know, they want... You know, it's a game against a contender, so again, they should be playing this pretty straight up. I don't really mind uh, Bradley Beal here. When Jimmy Butler is not going to be on the floor for Minnesota, like I'm, I'm willing to take my chances on a guy on the wing like Beal. So, at least for FanDuel's sake, I'm okay with Beal. I'm not necessarily, I don't necessarily have a problem with, dra- with him on DraftKings. I just, they're, you know, it's a little bit more risky. That's not the best price. Uh, probably the inverse for Otto Porter, 7,400 on FanDuel, 6,400 on DK. Um, I'd be much more likely to want to have him on DK. But again, most of these guys, not the best price points. Um, I don't see anybody that stands out. I don't think that it's really the best matchup. There's a lot of value out there on an 11-game slate. This isn't a place where you should be forcing it. Uh, so I don't really see anybody else here that I would want more than, you know, 2 or 3% of. Admittedly, I'm going to be working through this a little bit faster than normal, uh, just because I don't know if I'm going to have the voice to get through 11 games. So better or short than long. I'll be around all day and stuff. Uh, I feel, you know, most of the way back, but still pretty congested. So I'm just, like... It's just harder for me to talk and be functional on camera. No live stream tonight. It's just, it it wouldn't be worth it. I'm going to get home from work today, uh, take a bunch of medicine and pass out like I've done since Friday night. All right. Bielitsa, 5,800 on FanDuel, 6,200 on DK. Um, He's been playing like an astronomical amount of minutes. So I'm a little interested there. Uh, Minnesota with the 106 implied total, which is 15th. Um, I don't have any issue running out Bielitsa. Um, I don't have any issue running out Towns. I think that Towns is in a pretty good spot. Uh, you know, he went for 71 a couple nights ago. He had a 59-pointer. Um, went for 55 in his most recent game. I don't have any issues uh, running out towns. <laughs> Same for Taj. Um, I'm probably going to have a decent amount of Minnesota. Bielitsa for sure. Per- just particularly because of his position. Um, towns for sure. Gibson for sure. Uh, and I'll probably have a sprinkle of Teague. And probably a little bit of Wiggins, but not too much. Um, let's see, power forward is a pretty decent matchup. Actually, what I should do is knock down Wiggins a little bit more. 
Where are you hiding, wig? There you are. And I want to bump up Taj a little bit. There we go. But yeah, I think that's a, a good spot. Uh, lots of Bielitsa on FanDuel. Um, solid amounts of Towns and Gibson. On DK, it's not as appealing. Uh, I don't think Bielitsa, Bielitsa holds the same sort of value. Uh, I think Towns is the best play um, on DraftKings. Now we'll go to Atlanta. Uh, Hawks, I have as seven-point underdogs at home against Oklahoma City. That would be the 102.5 implied total and the 20th best number. Uh, this is one of those games you need to be wary about since the Hawks suck and Oklahoma City doesn't. Uh, no Camp Bazemore. He's going to be done for the year. Hawks are running out a bunch of dudes that I barely know. Andrew White, Jalen Morris, Josh McGetty. It's like a D-League team. So, uh, stuff to pay attention to. You know, you get someone like Torian Prince going for 56 in his last game and a game after he went for 7. It's just so much of this is so untrustworthy. Uh, I don't think that Prince is someone that I'd be super interested in here. Uh, Tyler Dorsey, though, at 3,800 on FanDuel, I think is a nice punt play. Uh... You're not going to get rich off of Tyler Dorsey, but he will let you have the ability to, like, expand. Since there's a lot going to be a ton of guys out there, um, he's one of those guys that can get you up a role or up a position. So, you know, get you up to a stud if you want to pay down. Um, and then Schroeder, I do like that his prices come down, but... Oh, God, I just don't trust him. He should be so much better. But if he's going to be playing shaved minutes, um, he's a GPP-only guy. And I think probably a little too risky for me. And then, you, you know, you can get guys like John Collins, who, you know, he's going to play consistent minutes. I think he's starting to get a little tired. He's He hasn't been as efficient lately as he was in the start of the season. You know, you're playing with fire, Uh if you're trying to go after dudes on the Hawks, they're decent filler, but I don't think that um, you can rely on anybody on this squad with any sort of confidence. All right, sniffle break. All right, that should help. Uh, next up, Oklahoma City. 109.5 implied total is 10th. Um... They've got a pretty solid matchup, and small forward is the best spot. That would be number two, if we check that out. Uh, ten big games, five monsters, uh, very handily at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and boost Paul George. Uh, 9,000 for George, 8,400 on DK. I, I love it. Um, I don't have a problem going with it. He's gonna, he should be playing the minutes regardless. Uh, but I'd be perfectly fine with with George or Russ. I know uh, Mello was on a bit of a heater last night. Started off the game with three straight threes. Um, I would have loved to be a part of that, considering I feel like I go after Mello a lot and he duds. So it sucks to sort of miss out on that. Keep an eye on Steven Adams. Uh, I think there's a really realistic chance that he does not play tonight. Uh, left the game and did not return last night from a hip injury. Uh, if he doesn't play, you're definitely going to see a lot more uh, Jeremy Grant and Patrick Patterson. And, you know, in a game against the Hawks on a back-to-back, -back, it doesn't strike me as a spot where Steven Adams is going to play. However, he's still not ruled out, so, uh, you know, I project him as normal. I'll make the change uh, when news comes out. Um, Grant and Patterson would both look pretty good. Patterson in particular uh, would be incredibly playable. But other than uh, Paul George and Russ, there's not much here for me. Uh, I would have a very marginal amount of mellow. 
and I don't even think that I'd have a very large amount of Russ. Um, I just appreciate the consistency. But he should be able to do whatever he wants against this Atlanta squad. Go to Brooklyn now. Uh, Nets, 104.75 implied total. Um, that's 16th. They are 9.5 point underdogs at home against the Raptors. Um, tough matchup for Brooklyn. Not going to be a ton that we want to see here. Um, you can talk me into Dinwiddie on DK. That 5500 price point is is pretty nice. I don't see anything on FanDuel that would lead me to believe I want any part of Brooklyn. But... I think there's a reasonable stance to take that if you take one of Dinwiddie or Russell, you know, one of those guys are going to make you happy. One of them will probably make you relatively sad, too, so be prepared for that. But, you know, it's a game uh, with a team that's not very good against a team that's the best team in the East. So there shouldn't be a ton to like on Brooklyn. Um, I don't even want to parse through much else. You know, Toronto's a terrifying defensive team. They're not better they don't have better than average at any position right now. Shooting guard and power forward are both twentieth. So yeah, uh unless you're on DK and you're grabbing one of Dinwiddie or Russell and sort of like a balanced lineup, I would be avoiding Brooklyn tonight. <laughs> Raptors, one fourteen point two five implied total is sixth. Um, they've got exceptional matchups at point guard, at power forward, and at center. Uh, point guards, 12 big games, 7 monster games uh, against the Brooklyn Nets this year. So I do want to bump up Kyle Lowry a bit. And I should probably bump up Van Vliet a little bit. Now, shooting guards, 10 duds against Brooklyn. So I am a little concerned about that for uh, DeRozan. So I'm going to knock him down just a little bit. That feels like the wrong number. There we go. So, yeah. Uh... Given what we know there, oh, I should grab power forward and uh, center too, but I don't think it's going to matter all that much. Abaka, D and F, Purtle. Yeah, it's not going to matter. I'll hit Siakam a little bit. Because I think he's going to be in line for a little bit of extra run tonight. But given the choice between DeRose and Lowry, uh, at least for tonight, I would take Lowry. I think the matchup is a little bit better. However, there's a little bit of balance there in that Brooklyn is good at cutting off threes, so that could fit DeRozan's game a little bit better. Um, I don't necessarily have a problem with either, but I would prioritize Lowry. Um, I'd be okay with Jonas on DraftKings, 5,900 price point is great compared to FanDuel 73. Uh, this could be a spot where Van Vliet sees a couple extra minutes. Um, he's been light on the minutes in his last one with only 16. So they have been trying to be a little bit more balanced. But uh, yeah, I think Van Vliet and Siakam could be sneaky GPP guys if they get additional run here. There's not much else here for me, uh, but I do like Lowry, and at 8,000, I don't have much problem having a decent amount of him. We'll go to the Knicks. 106 implied total. I have them as three-point favorites at home uh, against the Mavs. We still need to hear about Cantor and Lance Thomas. Uh, right now, I have them both in, but if they're not... Um, That'll shift this stuff around a little bit. Um, so on FanDuel, surprise, surprise, I'll be looking at Moutier and Beasley. 
I think those guys are the only guys that are reasonable to have here. Um, I don't see much in the way of anything, though. You know, Hardaway is fine. He's just mid-tier. Uh, I don't want any part of Nilakina. Uh, knowing what happens with Cantor and Thomas will really open things up here to let you know if you need to look into, you know, Beasley for sure or, I don't know, whoever, you know, Kyle O'Quinn, I guess, if Cantor sits, Luke Cornett. Luke Cornett. Ah, it's definitely one of those two. Um, so yeah, pay attention to the news. I'll have updates for the Knicks, but for right now, they're not a team you should really be going crazy for. Uh, Dallas now. 103 implied total would be 18th. Uh, really good matchup at power forward, which is kind of interesting. I don't want to make any major tweaks just because so much of that has to do with Porzingis. Um... Wes Matthews is probably done for the year. So this is going to be a little bit different for Dallas. I mean, granted, he's been out pretty regularly, but they'll have a little bit different rotation moving forward. And again, like, so much of this is just mid-tier blah, not interesting stuff. Um, you can talk me into Dennis Smith. Uh, I think that he's going to relish playing in New York. Um... He thinks that he should have gone to New York in a way. Uh, so I think that he could be in a really fun case for tonight because um, I think he's going to want to go real big uh, to show off. Not normally a part of like the narrative type shit, but I think tonight uh, Dennis Smith is the type of guy that's going to want to have a big game in MSG. You know, there's no issue having Barnes. Um... I think he's just a relatively neutral play, and I think the rest of Dallas is not particularly interesting. They're really spreading the minutes out now, getting guys like Dorian Finney-Smith involved. You know, Kyle Collinsworth is uh, is playing again. Um, so I'm not really interested in much of anything here. Uh, you can talk me into Nerlens Noel in a GPP, but I don't necessarily trust the minutes. Um other than that, yeah, I think Dennis Smith is the only guy that I would be looking at. Now, Bulls, 109 implied total is 11th. They are hosting the Los Angeles Clippers, where they are 6.5-point underdogs. Uh, not going to be a ton here, although the pricing is a little advantageous. It's just really hard to trust the Bulls right now. Uh, Larry Markinen, 6,100 on FanDuel, 5,800 on DK. It's not a bad price. Um, he's had a couple games recently in the 30s, which would put him right at value. Uh, I'm okay with it. Uh, I wouldn't go crazy for it. I actually want to knock that back just slightly. I think he's a little over-projected. So just a little bit of an adjustment. Now Chris Dunn, 7,000 on FanDuel, 6,700 on DK. I don't have much of a problem here. Um, it's not a horrible matchup. Sixth ranking here. Uh, there's been a couple big games and some monsters. I would be fine with Chris Dunn. A lot of this is just passable. Um, there's risk involved because there's no telling what their rotations will actually be. But I think that you can make a case that Markinen, Dunn, Levine, Portis, Denzel Valentine on DK, you know, you could have bits of all of those guys. Um, I wouldn't trust any of these guys in cash, uh, but they all look like really reasonable uh GPP plays tonight. Yeah, I don't. Nothing seems to be slipping through the cracks for me. If I had to prioritize these guys on FanDuel, it would probably be Dunn, Portis, Markin, and Levine. Go to the Clippers. Now, the Clippers have great matchups, so I do want to give them some bumps. 
Oop, sorry. Sniffle time. There we go. Let that one slip. My bad. I can feel the congestion building in my head. I'm sure you guys hear it. Uh, anyway, Clippers, 115.5 implied total. Six and a half point favorites in Chicago. It's the fourth highest implied total. Uh, it's a great matchup for the Clippers. So we do want to pay attention to it because we're probably going to want to have parts of this. Um, Austin Rivers, 6,400 on FanDuel, 6,000 on DK. I think he's a little too expensive, but at the same time, I do need to give him a bit of a boost. Ba, ba, ba. Yeah, I'll have... He won't be the first guy that I try to prioritize here. Um, just because I don't entirely trust him. I don't see a ton of upside at 6,400. Uh, Lou Will, though. Quiet in his last two, coming off a couple days rest. Um, I have no issues having Lou Will. I want to give him a boost as well. Second best matchup for shooting guards. But, what was it, fifth? Yeah, fifth for point guards. So, whatever, however you want to classify Lou Will. Um, I'm giving him that boost. I'll likely have a bunch of him, as I usually do, just because there's so much upside in him. Uh, Tobias Harris, another another guy with a really solid matchup. I'd like to give him a boost. And it's probably in my best interest to give DeAndre a slight boost. So yeah, um, I like Lou Will the most. I like DeAndre a very close second. I think they're both in line for really solid games. Um, but I'll have a very solid amount of DeAndre, Lou Will, Tobias Harris, uh, to a lesser extent Rivers, although I'd be happy to have him in like team stacks. And then uh, Taya Dosich. Yeah, uh, at 4,600, I don't really mind it. I think a C is a very reasonable score for him at that point. Brief break. Alrighty. Um, so just to summarize, uh, go Clippers and don't go Bulls. Go Bulls enough to keep it close and let uh, the guys that I roster stay on the court. Okay, to the Pelicans. Nnop. That's not how you spell nop. Uh, Pels, 117.25 implied total is actually second. They are four and a half point favorites at home against the Hornets. Yeah, against the Hornets. Oh, it is against the Hornets. Flip-flop in those teams. Rivalry game. Should be. Uh, nothing crazy about the matchup. So the first guy we need to look at, obviously, is Anthony Davis. 12-9 on FanDuel, which is just, oh my god. 11-2 on DK. Uh, AD coming off the triple-double with points, rebounds, and blocks, which is just nasty. Um, look, he is a threat to go for 75-plus fantasy points every time he steps on the floor. Um... No one on the Hornets can check that. Um, I mean, obviously, there's no situation where Dwight Howard can guard him. Uh, so I guess you would see, like, Marvin Williams or Batum on him. None of those guys can handle that. It's not like they're going to bring Frank Kaminsky in to lock him down. So AD should be able to do whatever he wants. Uh, I like him a lot. Um, obviously the price is tough, but on an 11 game slate, you can usually find enough value to get there. I have no problem having a bunch of AD, um, as a guy that's gone for 70 plus in three, uh, three games in his last two weeks. One of those being a 96 pointer, you know, it's, it's Anthony Davis. You have to be weary of him rolling an ankle and missing time. That's a risk that you need to be willing to take if you're going to roster him. But, uh, I mean, he looks great on paper. 
I have no issues with it. I'll likely have a, a decent amount of him, uh, barring any news about his health. Uh, Drew Holiday, I think, is just a little too expensive now. 8900 uh, It's going to be tough to return value there. I don't have a huge problem with Drew in cash, but uh, I don't see much value in that for a GPP. Uh, they've trimmed Rondo's minutes again. You know, went from into the 30s to 20 and 23. I, I can never figure out this sort of path that they do with him. Um, so really, I don't see much of anything to like in New Orleans except for AD and to a minor extent uh, Drew. Um, same sort of situation for Miritich. He's 6,000 on FanDuel. I think he's in a position where he could return a lot of value if he gets to that 27 to 31 minute mark. But right now I have him projected for 25. Um, he could pop off if he plays 30 very easily. So I think he's a decent GPP flyer, but he's going to be hard to trust. Um, Hornets now. 112.75 implied total is 7th. Uh, they've got a really good matchup from a uh, you know big games perspective. We'll take a look at it. Eleven big games and three monster games for our point guard. So I do want to give Kemba just a slight boost up. We've got the sixth best shooting guard matchup. Nine big games. Uh, three monsters. So I do want to give Batum a slight boost. Six best at small forward. This one I don't see as big here, uh, so I don't really want to tweak that. But third at power forward. 13 big games. Four duds, two monsters. I'm going to trust that one. Especially because it could be Miritich now, so... Um, I trust it even more. Uh, who are we looking for? Marvin Williams. And Kaminsky, I guess. And then... Uh, Dwight, 8th. I don't need to make a tweak there. So, Kemba. 8,300 on FanDuel, 8,000 on DK. It's a great matchup. Um, he's still playing hard. He's still playing... You know, a normal allotment of minutes, 39 in his most recent game. So he's coming off a couple days rest. Uh, I don't. I like that price point a lot. I like the matchup a lot. Uh, Kemba's one of my favorite point guards of the night. I would want to have a decent amount of Kemba. Uh, on FanDuel, at least, I would like to have a decent amount of Batum. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, 7,000 on FanDuel. Needs 35, went for 55 in his last game. Um, I'm willing to take a chance on Batum's upside in this matchup. Uh, so no issues having a bunch of Kemba. No issues having a decent amount of Batum, particularly on FanDuel. Uh, you can talk me into a decent amount, or a, an okay amount, I guess, of Dwight. Um, in theory, he should be able to... You know, do whatever he wants to Okafor. But let's see what Dwight's recent. Yeah, you know, he went for 60 in his last game, 46 fairly recently. Both of those would have been fine. Uh, I don't have any problem having some Dwight. Uh, down the line, though, I don't, I don't really need much of the, the rest of the Hornets. To the Spurs. I got popped last night, had a bunch of... Uh, Rudy Gay, Kyle Anderson, Pau Gasol, they all played like stupid minutes. Patty Mills played nine minutes. Pau Gasol played 15. Danny Green played 14. Kyle Anderson played 15. Oh, I hate the Spurs. So I'm assuming Lamarcus Aldridge plays. Uh, if he does, you know, this is obviously a good spot. Um... I'm also assuming that Aaron Gordon plays. So I would have no problem rolling out LaMarcus Aldridge. Uh, 8,500. He would feel pretty safe to me. Uh, as safe as a spur can feel. I'd be okay having a lot of DeJounte Murray, at least on DK. That's a really good price. 5,800. Um, he should get a full allotment of minutes. 
everybody should be relatively well rested. No one, no one played anything of value except for Brandon Paul. Nobody gives a shit about that. It's hard for me to say that there's anything interesting on the Spurs. I, you just can't trust the rotations. And if they're going to be playing on a back-to-back and they're playing Orlando, a team that has nothing to play for, um, there's no telling what Pop does here. I mean, Pop might go out there and play a bit at the two-guard if he wants. I don't know. Only guy I'm looking at on San Antonio uh, would be Aldridge, and even that would be muted. And then Murray, if you're playing on DK, is probably the only other option. To the Magic. Uh, Magic, 99.5 implied total. I have them as 9-point underdogs in San Antonio. This is one of the... uh, This is the second lowest implied total of the night. I have Aaron Gordon back. I have no interest in Aaron Gordon. Um, I have no interest in Jonathan Simmons. Now that Gordon would be back. Uh, Vooch is okay. I could see him having a, an efficient game against the scrubs of San Antonio, but it not really mattering. So, no, I wouldn't have a huge problem there. Um, DJ Augustin at 4,500 isn't horrible. Spurs. Nothing crazy, a mid-tier matchup for point guards. So, you know, you can sneak Augustine in as a value point guard, and I, I wouldn't really mind. Uh, Jonathan Isaac, I wouldn't entirely trust if Gordon is back. If he's not back, you know, I think he's worth a flyer and a GPP, but I wouldn't go too crazy. Just wanted to make sure I was actually still recording. Yeah, this is just this isn't a really fun game for me. You can't trust San Antonio, and I don't see much value on Orlando if Gordon is back. If Gordon's not back, you know you'll see some adjustments here, and some value might pop up. Three games left. I'm churning through this as quick as I can. Uh, the Jazz hosting the Detroit Pistons. Jazz eight point favorites at home against the Pistons. One hundred three implied total is eighteenth. We'll take a look at... Yeah, Donovan Mitchell is dramatically over-projected. I don't know why, though. Yeah, I, I gotta knock him back a little bit. I just don't trust that. It's too high. That makes me feel a little bit more comfortable. Um, Gobert looks really good on DraftKings, 7,800. He's been playing monster minutes lately. Uh, no reason to stress about facing Drummond. I think a B-plus is a very good rating. I would want to have a lot of Rudy Gobert, uh, if I were using, if I were playing on DK tonight. Um, same sort of thought process. I would be cool with having some Favors and some Mitchell and some Rubio. I think all those guys have pretty nice prices there. I don't see the same sort of value on FanDuel. Um, I would probably only be looking at Gobert out of anybody on Utah. Maybe a couple flyers on Donovan Mitchell if the shot's falling. But I think Utah looks like more of a DraftKings play today. Um... As per usual, I have no interest in Joe Ingles on FanDuel, even though the dude's been balling out of control lately. Rubio's just too expensive at 7,500, even though, you know, 47 in his last game, another 42-pointer here. Um, he can be in a couple lineups, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't load up. He's much better on DK. Now we'll go to the Pistons. This is one I'm going to want to talk about. Um, Pistons with a 95 point implied total it's dead last 22nd on the night Uh, the key takeaway though Drummond's matchup 8 big games and 4 monsters have come against Utah Um, I'm not entirely nervous about Gobert's defense on a 1 to 1 matchup 9800 on FanDuel 8500 on DK 
uh, I'll probably have I'll probably be a little bit heavier on Drummond than the field um, because I think that he could have a decent game tonight. After that, I'm I'm pretty much set. Uh, lowest implied total. You know, it's a tough matchup everywhere else. They're all below average positional matchups. So I don't really trust Blake or Reggie Bullock, Ish Smith. I think Stanley Johnson's going to be back and Dwight Bikes. So, you know, rotations are going to be trimmed a little bit. Only guy I'm looking at here is Drummond. We'll go to Phoenix. This one should be fun. Uh, Suns hosting the Cavs. They are seven point favorites at seven point underdogs, excuse me, at home. And that is the eighth highest implied total. Uh, obviously, it's a great matchup. Cleveland bad on D. Uh, TJ Warren at 7,000. Um, expected to be back. Warren, Booker, and Josh Jackson are all probable. Uh, I have no problem having a bunch of Warren. I have no problem having. A bunch of Booker, particularly on FanDuel, a little bit less so on DK. Um, I'm not worried about this matchup at all. You know, I expect them to get a decent amount of run. The Cavs are terrible on D, uh, so I want to have good bits of Warren and Booker. Um, I think Bender is worth a flyer in GPPs. I wouldn't touch him in cash. Uh, Peyton's been playing less minutes, and his, his price doesn't really reflect that. So that D plus rating uh, looks pretty reasonable to me. Um, I don't really have a ton of interest in Josh Jackson if everybody's back, but he's okay at that price. Uh, at fifty nine hundred on DK, he's a full avoid. But I like those two A minuses. I think they're very very valuable plays tonight, and I will be uh, pretty heavy on Phoenix. Now for the Cavs, one eighteen point five implied total. Number one, they've got the best matchup on the board by a country mile. Um, And I need to pause to blow my nose. Almost at the finish line. We could do this. So Braun is 12-5 on FanDuel, 11-6 on DK. Uh, I mean, it's hard not to like him. He should do whatever he wants to Phoenix. I mean, they're absolutely atrocious. Uh, I should boost him a little bit. So we're going to give him a boost. So, yeah, I like Braun as a stud tonight. Um, can make a case he's probably the best stud tonight. And after that, it's the same sort of scenario for me um, for the Cavs. Just sort of amplified a little bit tonight because of their opponent. So, George Hill, Larry Nance, Kyle Korver, I mean, Clarkson, I guess, J.R. Smith, I guess, all of those guys, I'm, I'm okay with slotting in into GPP. When you're going to get the Suns, um, I'm willing to take some flyers and take the chances here. This should be, there should be a ton of fantasy points out there, whether that's from rebounds and missed shots or just no defense whatsoever and a ton of scoring. So I'm going to want a lot of this game. It'll be predominantly LeBron plus X. And then I'll probably have a decent amount of Booker and Warren on the other side. But this is one of my two favorite games uh, to have a bunch of tonight. I think that given everybody on here, I think George Hill on FanDuel would be my my favorite play out of everything. Finally, last game. Lakers hosting the Nuggets. 114.5 implied total for the Lakers. That is fifth. They are two-point underdogs at home against the Nuggets. Uh, So first up would be KCP. Um, I'd be perfectly fine with it. I think he looks really good on DK. Uh... He feels pretty safe in cash for me. A little bit less so in a GPP. I don't see a ton of upside for him. Um, I'll have him, but I won't go crazy for it. Uh, Kuzma, 
7,600. He's a straight A on DK, and I am perfectly okay with that. I think there's a ton of upside in that number. Uh, went for 43 a couple nights ago. Um, you know, that would be a, a solid amount of value. Granted, it did take 42 minutes. I probably want to nerf him a little bit. I think he's a little too high. That makes me feel a little bit better. I like him a lot, uh, but that price on DraftKings is, is way more interesting to me. Um, I think Lonzo's a solid play. Uh, 7,800 and 7,500. Really, I'm going to have a lot of everything that I'm highlighting right now. I don't have a problem having two of each of those guys you know, in most of my lineups. They all have the ability... Uh, to pop off a little bit. I think they're all a little bit underpriced. I really like Brooke Lopez, especially on DraftKings at 5,800. If he's going to keep getting 30-plus minutes, it's a no-brainer. Um, but I'm going to end up with a very solid amount of Lakers. These last two games between Suns, Cavs, Lakers, and Nuggets uh, are going to make up a lot of my ownership. I want to give more details, but I'm fading fast. <laughs> uh, last team up is the Nugs. 116.5 implied total. Uh, Two-point favorites in L.A. This is the third highest implied total. Uh, it's a really solid matchup. Lakers aren't anything. It aren't great shakes on D. So we'll start with Gary Harris. Um, 6,500 I'd be totally fine with. Uh, I got 40 two games ago. You'd be plenty happy with that. Uh, Will Barton, same price. I prefer Harris to Will Barton. Um, I think that Jokic is in an unbelievable spot. He's been playing pretty well in his last three. Here comes a call. Sorry, guys. Uh... I think Jokic is a really solid center play tonight. Uh, I wouldn't really be worrying about Brook Lopez at all. Um, Jokic should have the opportunity to facilitate two games in the two games at 55 in his last three. Um, his price is a little high, makes it hard to find a little bit of value, uh, but he feels like a pretty safe option tonight. But I think the safest guy might be Paul Millsap, 6700 on Fanduel, 6400 on DK. Uh, getting the Lakers, young team, um, he should be crafty enough to get your get to value. I uh, went for 37 um, two nights ago, or however many nights ago, four nights ago, two games ago. Uh, I think he ends up in that range again. Uh, I'd be more than happy having a decent amount of Millsap. He should pop up a lot in the optimizer. Speaking of, let's dump that stuff in and check out what pops. And yeah, I apologize for this. I know that this was not uh, my best work. I just wanted to make sure that I got a video out there. It's been way too long. Um, I'm obviously still fighting this off. It should get better and better each day now. Uh, but we'll be back to normal shortly. All right, we'll change that and bump the rando up to 10. Let's see what we get. That's a really interesting spread so far. Nobody outwardly crazy except for Bielitsa, and I'm perfectly fine with that. So I want to grab Bielitsa, Devin Booker, Kemba Walker. Millsap, and then we would look at these three, or these four. I'd probably be okay with this lineup. I would probably switch Barton to Gary Harris. Um... I, 
I would be okay here, but I would want to redo this Brewer Portis section into something else. But I think this one would be my favorite of everything I see here. Just switching out for Gary Harris. That's not a bad lineup. We need a little bit of value yet. There's not a, there's not a ton of it out there. Everything, everybody just looks somewhere in that average to above average range. Check out DraftKings. This one should be really interesting. On an 11-game slate, DraftKings is kind of crazy. There's just so many options. Alrighty, we'll plug this in and go. We might not get to 100. This is crawling. A lot of AD is interesting, but he is at a really desirable price on DraftKings. And when you have the ability to plug in, uh, you know, utility spots and have a lot of lineup options, it's a little bit easier to get the machinations right to get to a guy like AD. So let's grab AD. Let's grab Kyle Kuzma. Let's grab DeJounte Murray. Let's grab Brooke Lopez. Um, anybody else just jumping off the page for me? If I grab Drummond. I think both of these lineups would be really crazy GPP lineups, but I think it's a little bit too aggressive, and I would need to back back off of Drummond. Maybe grab someone like TJ Warren. That's a bit too much Kyle Korver for me, but I get it at 3,600. Um, DraftKings is going to be tricky tonight. There's so many people that are going to be so similar in that like 5,000 to 7,000 range. Being able to hit that is going to be is going to be pretty nuts. All right, guys, that's all I've got today. Um, I'm happy that I was able to get through and talk to every team. I wish that I could have, you know, talked a little bit more in depth, but still working my way back. Uh, no live stream tonight. I'm just going to try to take some medicine and call it a night. But I will be around to do updates. So, uh, you know, feel free to hit me up with any questions, uh, follow me on Twitter, you know, like, and subscribe for this video and, uh, I will see you guys in the morning. Adios.